In this video, I'm going to talk about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And I'm going to start with the equation. Delta x times delta p is equal to or greater than h divided by 4p. So what exactly does this mean? When you think of x, what do you think of? x is basically the position of something on the x-axis. So delta x is the uncertainty in the particle's position. Delta P is the uncertainty in the particle's momentum. Now the momentum of an object is the product of the mass and the velocity of that object. H is Planck's constant. So what's the basic idea behind Heisenberg's uncertainty principle? The basic idea is this. The more you know about the particle's position, the less you know about its momentum. And the more you know about the momentum of a particle, the less you know about it, its position. Now, I need to know that we're not dealing with a single value. It's hard to know exactly the position of a, an electron, but rather, we're dealing with a range of values. Now, h, Planck's constant, is a very small number. It's 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. So what this tells us is that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle applies for things that are very small. Things like an electron or a photon. Those are things that are very small. It doesn't apply for things that are very large, like a, a soccer ball or a car. It doesn't, it's not significant for those things. So let's see if I can illustrate this concept. Let's use a real life example. Let's say if I have a ball on top of a cliff and I kick the ball towards the right with a speed of 15 meters per second. If I know the speed of the ball and its direction, and let's say, let's ignore air resistance and any wind effects, let's say the ball is only under the influence of gravity. I can predict with good certainty where exactly this ball is going to land using the concepts of projectile motion. And so whenever you're dealing with large things, large objects, the behavior of large stuff is relatively predictable the behavior of small things is less predictable. There's more uncertainty with small things, but there's more certainty with large things. So let's say if I had an electron and I shot it horizontally from the top of a cliff. Now, it's hard to predict the behavior of an electron. It might go straight. It might curve this way. It might curve that way. So I can't say with exact certainty that the electron is going to be right there. Rather, I can increase my certainty by saying it's going to be somewhere between these two points. So I can't give an exact point, but I can say it's going to be somewhere between uh, those two points. So I, I need to speak with a range of values rather than one single value. And so whenever you're dealing with small things, you need to talk about probability rather than exact values. A good example to illustrate this is the toss of a coin. Now, if I toss the coin once, I can't tell with exact certainty if it's going to be heads or tails. It's completely random. However, if I toss the coin a hundred times, I could say that it's going to be somewhere between 40 to 60 times that I'm going to get heads because the probability is 0.5. So it's most likely to be around 50, but I can't say with exact certainty that it's going to be 50. So I can't give a single exact value. If I say it's going to be 50, my certainty will not be that great. It's a small chance it's going to be 50. However, if I speak in terms of a range of values, like 40 to 60, I could say I'm 95% confident that it's going to be between 40 to 60. But I might be only maybe 5% confident that it's 50. So with events that you don't have control over, events that are random, it's hard to predict the exact value of what that event will be. However, you can increase your certainty if you speak of it in terms of a range of values. So let's say if instead of tossing a coin 100 times, we toss it 1,000 times. Now, I can't say with exact certainty that 516 times it's going to be heads. Because 
you don't know with that degree of certainty. However, I can say that I'm going to get heads somewhere between 450 and 550 times. So if I flip the coin a thousand times, it's going to show up as heads somewhere between these two values. And I could be almost 99% confident that it's going to be in this range. And this is the basic idea behind the law of large numbers. When you're dealing with small things, it's too, there's too much unpredictability, too much uncertainty with small things. Like if you flip a coin just once, you can't tell if it's going to be heads or tails. However, if you flip it a thousand times, you can predict with a lot of certainty a range of values in which it's going to be at. The probability of getting heads is 50%. So it's most likely to be at 500 than at 550. But you can't tell if it's going to be exactly 500. So if you speak of it in terms of a range of values, it becomes more predictable. And that's the basic idea behind the law of large numbers. Large events are more predictable than small events. Now let's go back to this equation. So earlier we said that the more we know about the position of a particle, the less we know about its momentum. So let's draw a number line to illustrate the position of the particle on the x-axis. And let's say that the particle is most likely to be at the center of this number line. Now we can't say with exact certainty that it's going to be at position 0 or position 0.5 or position negative 0.8. We can't say that. However, we could say with reasonable certainty that the particle is going to be somewhere between negative 1 and 1. It might be 0.5, it might be negative 0.4, but if we speak of it in terms of a range of values, in terms of probability, then we could be more certain about the particle's position. Because it can be in anywhere, it could be at 0.5, it can be at 1.2, it could be anywhere along this number line. But it's most likely to be between negative 1 and 1. It's, most prob it's probably 90% uh, probable to be in that range. So that's delta x. That's the uncertainty in the particle's position. Now let's create another number line that represents the particle's momentum. And let's say that the particle is most likely to have a momentum of 100, which means that there's a good chance that the momentum is going to be between 75 and 125. We can't say with exact certainty that it's going to be 100 or 99 or 101, but we could say with reasonable certainty that it's between 75 to 125. Now, what's going to happen if we increase the uncertainty of the particle's position? What's going to happen to the momentum? As we said before, if you increase the uncertainty of the particle's position, the uncertainty of the particle's momentum will decrease. So the less you know about the particle's position, the more you know about its momentum. So let's say if we increase the uncertainty from negative 3 to 3. So delta x increases. Therefore, according to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, delta p must decrease. These two are inversely related. So therefore, the range in the momentum values will decrease. So if the uncertainty in the particle's position increase, the uncertainty of the particle's momentum decrease. So here, because we have a, a larger range of values, we know less about the particle's position. But now we have a smaller range in the values of the momentum of the particle. So we know more about the particle's potential momentum. It can be somewhere between 90 and 110. So we can't say exactly that it's 95 or 105. However, we could say with more certainty that the range is going to be between 90 and 110. So we can increase the certainty of where it might be. But it's still going to be within a range of values. So we still can't say exactly what it's going to be, but we can increase the certainty of the momentum by decreasing the certainty of the particle's position. And so that's the, the gist of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So let's work on an example problem. 
What is the uncertainty in the position of an electron given an uncertainty value of 0.15 meters per second and the velocity of the electron? So our goal is to find delta x. That's what we're looking for. And we're given delta v. It's 0.15 meters per second. And keep in mind, the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So according to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, delta x times delta p is equal to h over 4 pi. So our goal is to find delta x. So we need to multiply it by 1 over delta p in order to isolate delta x. So these two will cancel. And so delta x is h over 4 pi times delta p. Now delta p, we know that momentum is the change in mass times velocity. Well, momentum is mass times velocity, so the change in momentum is the change in the product of the mass times the velocity. Now, the mass of an electron is pretty much fixed. So this is going to be m and delta v for this particular problem. Now, there's one little thing I need to add because this is supposed to be an inequality sign. So delta x has to be equal to or greater than h over 4 pi times delta p. So let's go ahead and calculate that value. So Planck's constant, we know it's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 divided by 4 pi. And then we have the mass of the electron, which is this number, multiplied by the uncertainty and the velocity of the electron, which is 0.15. So go ahead and plug this in. See what answer you get. So the uncertainty in the particle's position is 3.86 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. So if you convert that to micrometers, if you divide it by 10 to the 6, or rather 10 to the negative 6, I'm just going to write the answer here. The uncertainty is 386 micrometers, if you round it. So let's save this answer. So that's the uncertainty in the position of the electron. Part B, let's calculate the uncertainty in the position of the two kilogram ball. Now let's use the same equation. By the way, this should be equal to or greater than. I keep forgetting that. So this is gonna be h over four pi m delta v. So the only thing that's changing in part b relative to part a is the mass of the ball. It's 2 kilograms instead of this tiny mass. And so the change in velocity is still going to be 0.15. So now let's see what's going to happen. So what I got is 1.76 times 10 to the minus 34 meters. Now, in terms of micrometers, if we divide that by 10 to negative 6, it's still going to be very small. It's 1.76 times 10 to the negative 28 micrometers. So let's compare these two values. What do you notice? Which of these values is measurable? We can measure 386 micrometers, but we can't measure this tiny number. It's so insignificant. And because the mass of the ball is relatively large compared to the mass of an electron, the uncertainty in the position of the ball is extremely, extremely tiny. It's so tiny that it's not noticeable. We can't measure it. So therefore, we know exactly what the position of the ball is going to be. We're not uncertain about where it's located. But we can't be sure about the position of the electron. 
because it's so tiny. The size of an electron is a lot smaller than a micrometer. So within 386 micrometers, that's a lot of space for a tiny particle such as an electron. So as you can see, there is a huge uncertainty in the position of the electron given this small value in the velocity of the electron. Now granted, the uncertainty value in the velocity of the electron is relatively small compared to the practical speeds of an electron, which can easily be hundreds of thousands or even a million meters per second. And so 0.15 is very small compared to such a large number. And so that's why the uncertainty in the position of the electron is so huge compared to the size of the electron. So I just want to point that out. But the purpose of this problem is to help you to see that large objects, large things, are more predictable than small things. So as we increase the mass of the object, the uncertainty in the position of the object decreases. So for something as big as a ball, we know exactly where it's located. We know its position. We're not uncertain about that. But for tiny things like an electron, well, there's going to be more uncertainty. We're not sure exactly where the electron is going to be at. We don't know its position exactly because it's so tiny and it's moving so fast. So that's what you want to take from this video. Large things have behaviors that are predictable. There's not much uncertainty with large stuff. But small things, there's a lot of uncertainty with it. There's a lot of randomness. You can't predict the behavior of small stuff like electrons and things like and photons and other stuff like that. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a good day.